All right, let's go. Hallelujah. Everybody's got the uh, prayer of victory. Look at the prayer of victory first. Okay, everybody got that now. I'm going to teach you something tonight, how to intercede and how to pray. And uh, to get your spirit involved in your prayer. Now, sometimes we can just pray and talk to God. You can sit in your easy chair and do that. Uh, there's times when we do that. But there's times what you call intercessory praying. Times when you pray against the enemy. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Ephesians tonight, 610, about principalities and powers. But the object is to get your spirit strong. You know, if you're going to get your physical body strong, you got to do a little exercise. Would you stand up here, son? This is one of my sons right here. Now, I want you to know this man here. He, he's built, isn't he? You know why he's built like that? <coughs> Let it out, son. He, you see, he, the reason he's that way and the reason that I'm this way <laughs> is he works out physically, see? But I work out spiritually, you see. Now, I used to be like that when I was his age, but I'm my age. And, it, you know, that scripture that Rick shared with us about us wasting away, you know, something the outer man is wasting away, but the inner man, you know, is getting stronger and stronger. So he knows the principle of getting outside of his body and everything strong. He lifts weights. He does all those things. To share, share with us uh, some of the things that you have to do to keep, to keep yourself uh, uh, physically shaped. Come on now. Tell us. Don't be bashful. No problem. Go ahead. Um, all right. So. I don't have time in the morning time because that's, you know, what time we start. <coughs> but normally I, I start off on the uh, treadmill for about 10 minutes. Amen. And then I go from the treadmill to the bicycles for 10 more minutes. And then I go from the bicycles to the uh, gazelle or whatever you call that thing. You know what I'm talking about. You do the... So I do another 10 minutes on that till I'm sweating and I'm about to fall down on my face. <clears throat> and then I start, you know, that's all the heart and the blood pressure uh, part of it and the, then I go into the uh, the next part which is the free weights lifting pushing you know strengthening but it's not you know my dad told me and I'm not talking about my my holy father I'm talking about my real father because he's in such bad shape he's got diabetes he's got um, COPD he's got all these things and he looked at me one day he said son you're getting fat he said look at me he said, I want you to go to that gym and I want you to stay in there because that's the only hope you got as far as your health. Because look at me. Look at what I'm going through right now. And he goes, I wish that I hadn't have done the things that I... So I'm telling you now, I want you to go to that gym and I want you to stay in there. And I usually stay in there for about two hours before I'm finished with my workout. Because I make sure I go through everything thoroughly. And then when I know my body's told me I've done enough, you know, I go to the paint shop after that. I went through the body shop, now it's time to go to the paint shop. You don't, you but, don't go to Hardy's? No, I'm talking about the, I come here, you know, and I let God paint me down with the Holy Spirit, you know, with that fire. But the, the bottom line is, is that I have a routine, you know, that God's taught me to stay healthy. I'm not, it's, not, it's not a guarantee. There's no guarantees in life. Anything could happen, you know. We have consequences by the things that we do, and I'm learning by these things by the things that people did in their past, like my friend that has cancer, he smoked for many years, you know, and I had so many people come to me, don't do that, don't smoke. Well, what, back, my mentality back then was, well, so what, I'm gonna die anyway, what's the difference, you know? I know y'all have heard that before. But the bottom line is, is that I go through a routine, like he's talking about, the spiritual routine that we go through here of strengthening our minds and our spirits in the grace of God's uh, lordship and his righteousness and uh, you know you don't give up even when I'm in the gym sometimes I get so tired I'm like I don't want to do this no more God what am I doing this for the pastor said it was just spiritual I ain't got to worry about this body it's going to die anyway so what's the difference and God's like but you got to keep sure your body fit one. too you know the Bible says you know to keep yourself mentally spiritually and physically fit and, and to keep your Holy Spirit what is it to keep your body holy, 
so that the Holy Spirit can dwell within you. But that's my take on what I do, and, and it makes me feel better. You know, it, it, you know, my blood pressure was a little high, but I don't believe in taking medicine. I, I believe in going and taking care of it, which means if I got to get on that treadmill about 10 more minutes, then I just keep running till that blood, blood pressure regulates, and, and I pray about it. I'm like, God, just give me the strength. Lord, you know I don't like medicine, and medicine don't like me. Um, all my, this is one more thing I want to share with them. All my life since I've been a kid that people have tried to push medication on me and I'm talking about the kind of medication like Prozac and stuff like that and I kept refusing and I said no I will not take this I don't need this Spencer you've got a mild uh, if I'd have listened to that now I'm not saying I don't have problems because I know I got problems we all do but what I am saying is is that if I would have listened to each one of them and saying that I have to take all this medicine what kind of effects would that have had on my body? You know, with uh, prescription medicine that, you know, for depression. I've, I've read articles where uh, people took that stuff and killed people. You know, so that tells me there's something demonic behind it. I'm not saying don't take it because I've read articles too where this man kept praying for his wife. And Billy Graham had posted this a long time ago when I was going through this. And said that the man kept asking the Lord to heal his wife because she was depressed all the time. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> the answer came one day that he had, took her to the doctor and she needed to get medicine. And the medicine helped. Amen. So I'm not saying that medicine doesn't help everybody. But I just knew it wasn't for me because it was just so awkward the way it was pushed on me. It was like, you know, y'all don't, I don't know, you don't know the history of my mother and she died from an overdose. She was on that kind of medication and they told her she was schizophrenic and everything. You know, so I, from learning from that, I refused to listen to what the devil was telling me. And I'm still standing here in church. I haven't given up. I'm 45 years old. I've been saved since I was 19, and I'm still healthy, thank God. You know, I'm not what I used to be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. Amen. Amen. Okay. You may, you may be seated now. Watch this. <laughs> yeah, I used to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Everybody has got uh, the victory. Everybody's got that now. Wave at me if you got it. Let's see. All right. You got it. I'm going somewhere with this tonight. Got a half an hour to talk to you about it. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to start out with this. Uh, breaking um, the, the prayer of victory and we're going to end uh, the message on that. So let's all do it together. Are we ready? Yes. My Father in heaven, I, everybody now go. My Father in heaven, I pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of a virgin, lived as a man, died for my sins, arose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and now sits at your right hand in a position of power and authority. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he will return to earth in like manner as he was seen ascending into heaven. I have confessed every known sin. I have asked and received your forgiveness. I will make restitutions whenever and wherever possible as the Holy Spirit directs. I am willing to forgive myself and am willing to forget every confessed sin. I have forgiven every person of everything that they have said or done to me. I am willing to forget everything. I have renounced every occult and psychic involvement and influence as sin, and I will never again notably look for guidance or information to any other supernatural power or influence except the Holy Spirit. And, <clears throat> and now in faith, I believe that Jesus is my Savior, Lord, Healer, Deliverer, and Friend, that you are my Heavenly Father, and that the Holy Spirit dwells in my body, that through the blood of Jesus I've been forgiven and cleansed of every and all sin, that through the blood of Jesus I've been redeemed out of the hands of Satan and from his power over me. Excuse me. <coughs> Catch my breath. <coughs> Here we go. 
I believe that I am your child and a citizen and an heir of your kingdom, that my body belongs to Jesus and is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. My spirit is filled and led by the Holy Spirit, and I now submit my body and soul to the Holy Spirit. By the mercies of God, I present my body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is my reasonable service. I am not conformed to this world, but I am transformed by the renewing of my mind, that I may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Therefore, Satan, you are an intruder in this body. Every legal right has been removed, and you can no longer seduce, afflict, oppress, torment, or influence my soul or body. Satan, you are a liar, thief, and a destroyer. I will not tolerate your presence any longer. My Lord Jesus Christ is my deliverer. He has given me authority to expel every evil spirit from this body. The blood of Jesus makes it possible for me to expel you in the name of Jesus Christ. In faith, I claim this authority and power right now. Okay, right over to the top. You evil spirits, every one of you, every seducing spirit, every unclean spirit, every oppressing spirit, every tormenting spirit, every vexing spirit, every infirm spirit, every occult spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to leave this body and to loose this soul. You must loose this mind. You must release this heart. You must leave this soul. You must loose this body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to go. The Holy Spirit is riding you from his temple and you must go now in the name of and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Woo! Now that's an exercise in the gym. You can do that right in your own home. Here comes Doris. Give Doris one of these, if you will. Give her that one there. Let's see, we had another one. Where's the other? Oh, right here. Now, how many felt a little bit better since you've done that? Now, you know, you... Uh, sometimes, if you're having real trouble, you can, you can do that every day. Later on, you might not have to do it maybe twice a week. But you know yourself. A lot of people don't know that certain things that the enemy does in the atmosphere causes us to feel like we feel. For example, let's just say there's times when I'm real tired. And what I will do, I will take authority. I'll go over that uh, uh, victory there, uh, prayer. And then I will take authority over the spirit of tiredness. And I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. You have given me authority and power over all the powers of the enemy. And I take, a, uh, uh, I take authority right now. I claim and receive that authority from you. And I, I just refuse that tiredness right now. Everybody say, I refuse, I refuse tiredness. tiredness. I refuse jealousy. I refuse, I refuse hatred. I refuse lying. I refuse, I refuse lying. everything that comes against me. That comes See, refusing is very important in the spiritual realm. It's just like he was talking about uh, the different machines that he would get on. So you have to learn to, to stand against the enemy. Now, the first scripture that we have on the board up there is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. And let's go over that a little bit. <clears throat> Here we go. In conclusion, Paul is saying, be strong in the Lord. Why? Why be strong? Because you've got so much coming against you. You're at work. People, uh, you know, talk about you. If, you. if you witness or you're a Christian, if they know you are, they'll make fun of you. I've had all of that in my day. And if you're not careful, you can get bitter. You can get re, uh, resentful. Now, but see, I learned this years ago because... Uh, I end up in a hospital uh, with a lot of anxiety. I mean, it was like I was having a heart attack. This was years ago. <clears throat> Susan and me would be, we minister seven days a week to people. Seven days a week, I worked at the air base and ministered and preached and taught the Word of God for years I did that. And after seven years of doing that, 
I began to wilt down. I began to wilt down. I said, what is wrong? And anxiety, I thought I was having a heart attack. And I'm not going into all the different things that happened when I was having that experience, but I ended up in the hospital and the doctor examined me and said, there's nothing wrong with you. And I knew instantly what the problem was. The powers of hell was against me. See, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So I had anxiety. So what in the world, I wonder what type of spirit should I deal with? Somebody tell me. Uh, I had anxiety. Uh, what type of, what would be the name of the spirit that I need to deal with? God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of love. No, no, give me, no. I had anxiety. What spirit should I, that's true. What, uh, what, uh, Spirit should I do? What should I name? I got anxiety now. What would be the name of the spirit? Anxiety. Are you out there, church? See, whatever you feel, whatever you feel, that's the enemy can uh, make you think it's your, your it's physical. Uh, are you listening? Can, can everybody hear me? Can everybody hear me? Okay, okay. I got these hearing aids, and sometimes I don't. Okay, so if it's let's just say that you have jealousy. What, what spirit should you come against? Tell me. Spirit. Huh? Spirit. Huh? What? Huh? Spirit. Jealousy. Okay. Let's say you got resentment towards somebody. What, what, what spirit should you come up against? Resentment. resentment. Uh, you got hatred towards somebody. Well, what spirit should you come up against? Okay. Now listen. It's very simple. It's not complicated. It's either flesh or right. It's either, everybody say, it's either spirit, spirit. or flesh. flesh. All right, if it's flesh, what do you do? I reckon myself to be dead indeed under jealousy, but I'm alive under God through Christ Jesus my Lord. That takes care of the flesh part. Then all of it, but it don't go away. Now you know it's a spirit. So you take authority over that spirit. If it's jealousy, if it's hatred, if it's gossip, if, whatever it is that you're sensing and feeling and you're doing, it's either flesh or spirit. Everybody say, flesh or spirit. Simple, not complicated. So, when this young man gets in there and starts lifting those weights, that's work. Everybody say, work. work. How you spell that? W-O-R-K. You went to school, didn't you? Oh, yeah. uh, work. It's work to pray. It is, Pastor Bob. I thought it was done. It's, it, it's, fun, it's fun when you see the devil is routed out. It's work. It's work. <clears throat> see, when you're, when, you're, when you're lifting those weights, you've got to put your will into it. You've got to put every muscle in your body into the lift that weight. When you're praying, you've got to come up against the enemy. You, 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 you say, and you've got, to, you've got to say, in the name of Jesus, and, and you've, got to, you've got to walk around. You've got to get your, your body in, 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 in gear here, but you've got to get your spirit activated into this fight. See, some people can't cast out spirits because their spirit man is, is not strong enough. See, the whole thing, it's the spirit warfare that we're in. It's, it's fighting the good fight of faith. It's spiritual battle. It's spiritual battle. And the church has to come into that understanding that whatever comes against you, you deal with that. If somebody at work is jealous over you, you take authority. Father, I thank you. I love my brother so and so, but I take authority over that jealous spirit in his life and I bind it now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I want to thank you. Now listen to me now. I thank you for the angels of God that are camped around me, which are ministering spirits of those that are heirs of salvation. Now you're calling down and, and asking God, send the spirits down to deal with that. I've seen people have such... I've seen people with negative attitudes towards me, and I can feel it if you, got, if you got that towards me. I can sense it in my spirit. And I intercede and pray, and, and, and maybe the next time I see them, they're free. Right. I don't sense it. I've dealt with it at home. Right, exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. I know I don't look 84, but I am. Listen, if I haven't come to some level of power and strength in my life by now, you guys forget it. I'm serious. 
Because I hope when you're 84, you're going to be tough in the spirit. Everybody say work. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. And you've got to say, speak and say, Lord, I draw from you, the Holy Spirit, the strength that I need to do this combat fight tonight. I don't want to, I want to go to bed. I'm tired. I've had a rough day. I mean, I want to go to sleep, but I've got to deal with this spirit tonight because this spirit is after the church. This spirit is after brother so-and-so. And I stand in the gap for him. And I t- I'm a watchman and I watch over your souls. And I take authority now over that spirit of jealousy. I take authority over that spirit of resentment. I take authority over that spirit of divorce. I burn that spirit of hell right now in Jesus' name. Yeah, get loud. Get loud. <laughs> See, it ain't hanky-panky. It is not now and then but down to sleep. I praise the Lord to keep my soul asleep or whatever it was. <laughs> anyway, getting back, getting back to the anxiety that I had. And, and, and Rick can bear, bear this with, with me because he, he had the same thing. And sometimes it comes on you right now, don't it? Anxiety. It tries. He's yeah, I mean, but you fight it, don't you? Yeah, I mean, Missy fights it for you. <laughs> hey, I thank God for Susan because she helped me do, doing this crisis too when I had that anxiety. I mean, I, I tell you, when you, you, you feel like you're going to die. It's horrible. And that doctor examined me and said, man, you're as healthy as you can be. And I knew. I knew what I had to deal with. I had so much pressure on me coming from every direction. And I begin to do spiritual warfare. I, we get, wrote these things down. We, got the, we begin to learn some things. We begin to pass the information on to people and, and uh, so forth. So I keep myself strong in the Lord. I am strong in the Lord. Everybody say, I am, I am strong, strong in, the Lord. in the Lord. Okay. That's important. Your, your testimony is very important. Now let's, read, let's go ahead and read more scriptures. Verse 11 on the board. Here we go. Because we've got 20 minutes here. Here we go. Put on God's whole armor. Oh, you mean we've got to have armor on? <laughs> what in the world is God's armor? Of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies that you may be able to successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. You know, when uh, Paul wrote that down there, he was, you know, he was in jail in Rome and he would see the Roman soldier and they saw all the armament on that Roman soldier. Shield, spear, helmet of salvation, belt, his feet shrouded with the preparation of the God. And he brought that over to the spiritual realm. The Christians have an armament. Notice this, put on God's whole armor. <laughs> It's God's armor. Mm-hmm. Lord, thank you that I got your armor on, the, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies. Supply me now, Lord, with this armament that I need. Lord, I thank you. I put it on. Oh, God, thank you right now. By faith, I put on the helmet of salvation. I, put, I have the shield of faith. I have this, yes, the sword of the Spirit. See, when you, when you launch your missile, of, which is the Word of God, everybody listening, a missile, which is the Word of God, goes against the enemy. I rebuke you, the enemy. I command you to go. Loosen me now. I refuse. Now, it depends on how embedded this spirit has infiltrated or infiltrated. Is that the word I want to use? Infiltered, infiltrated or in, in that has it got, gotten a hold of you. Let's put it that way. That's gotten a hold of. You. If you've been yielding, that which you yield to becomes your master. How long have you been yielding to this? <sighs> 30 years and you think one little prayer is going to 
You, you better roll your sleeves up and you better get the whole armor of God. And I tell you, I yielded that to that uh, um, um, spirit and didn't even know it. How long, I don't know. But I had a fight on my hands. And I committed myself to that fight. I either die or I'm going to live. Because in that whole transaction, you'll come that you will not fear death. And it doesn't matter if you just could die. That would be just fine. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Would you, would you get to, in that situation? Here I am having other people get delivered. And I needed deliverance myself. So I had to learn to fight. I had a wife that knew how to fight. She fought wrong beside me. And I thank God for that. Now look at that, what it says. That you may be able to successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. A lot of people don't even know that there's a devil. They think everything is natural. So we have to learn. You have to learn. It's either... It, it's either flesh or spirit. not complicated. Okay? Uh, let's just say that uh, how many in here would know that uh, you had anger? How would you know that? Yeah. <laughs> you, you feel it. You feel it. it, it ha listen, it has a certain manifestation. And it can blow up. You know, I know a lot of beautiful people. But, 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 you know, if that thing is set off inside of you, if you've got that thing inside of you, that anger that's built up, that your mama put, helped put in there, your daddy helped put it in there, your, your last friend helped you put it in there, everybody you meet puts a little bit in there, and you got it in there, and somebody comes up and says something wrong to you. What? What do you mean I got anger? Who said I got anger? Who do you think you are to say I got anger? And, and bless you wise, bless you wise, have you been, have you ever been there, uh, uh, young lady right there? How about you back right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at, look at. Come on and laugh with me. Get free tonight. Come on. See, I'm opening my life up for, to you tonight. If I don't open my life up, I, I ain't going to help you. I'm not a little tweety, tweety, tweety birdie in the, in the sky tweeting all the time. Nothing ever happens to pass the bomb. Read my lips. <laughs> if you feel lust, what would you do? Pray and ask God to remove it from my heart. All right, that's good. That's good. That's step one. But that thing keeps it on and on and on. And every time you see a woman, that thing pops up, pops up like that. Or if you're a woman and you see a, you see a good looking man like this man here or me, you pops up. It pops up. <laughs> Get out of here. Hey, it's, I've been around a long time. A long time. I know all the feelings that people have. But I'm teaching you spiritual warfare and I'm putting a little humor in it. It helps. I hope it helps a little bit. But we've got angels that will help us, but you've got to call on them. You have not because you ask not. When's the last time you called, uh, asked God to send a bunch of angels down here to help you in a situation? Don't lie to me now. Come on now. When's the last time? Huh? Don't, raise your hand. You can't remember because you ain't done it. But I'm here to not to scold you, but I'm here to teach you. Call them. They're up there. Man, I got to do something. I wish Bob would call me, call me down there, Bob. I, yeah, man, I'm, I, got a, I got a long sword. They are ministering spirits of those that are heirs of salvation. Anybody in here that's heir of salvation? Yeah, okay. If you don't know it, you better get into the Word and know it. All right, look what it says. Deceits of the devil. Listen, listen to this. So that's why you know I'm, I'm the, the blood covers me, the blood covers me. Yeah, I know that, and I believe that, and I'll get to that later. Not tonight, we got 10 more minutes. Give no place to the devil. 
He's talking to Christians. Now think that through. You can give place to the devil? Huh? Yes, sir. Is that right? Absolutely. Is that right, Linda? Is that right, Doris? Now, what happens if you have given place to the devil, son? You better roll your sleeves up and do a little fighting. You better put the whole armor of God. You, 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 you've given place to the devil. You've opened that door, and he'll come in every time. Now, history, if you never have any problems with the uh, demons, this is what Paul would say. You know, you're all covered with the blood and you don't have to worry about the demons and devils. You can't give it. It's impossible for you to give place to the devil. You can't do that because you're a child of God and the blood covers you. Even though you're sinning every day and you know you're sinning, but the blood covers you. Now, wait a minute, we mixed up there. <laughs> Yeah, the blood does cover us as we walk in the spirit. You have the blood that covers us. But you open that door and give place to the devil. Now, a lot of people don't know. That's why uh, it's a lot of work sometimes getting people free. I was ministering to this, this young man, and he, man, he gave place to the devil so many times. And, and boy, you know, in your mind... That's, that's the strongholds right in your mind. All these different thoughts coming. I wonder where are all those thoughts coming from. Son, do you know where there are all those thoughts coming into your Do you ever have any thoughts, bad thoughts in your mind, son? Tell you, tell you, pastor. Huh? Well, huh, tell me. Huh? Yeah, I know you do. Now, David, do you have any thoughts like that? Well, okay. <laughs> I've been around a long time, son. I was your age. When I was 16, <laughs> glory. <laughs> Man, what are y'all laughing at? I mean, it's like a submachine gun <laughs> coming in there, you know. All right, let's get serious, Bob. All right. All right eight more minutes. What do you do? Cast them down. Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And Lord, you bring every thought in my mind. No, you bring every thought, that's your part, into the obedience of God. So there is the casting down. And those thoughts will come to you, hit you like that. I don't want to think that. Oh, God. No, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. I rebuke that spirit now in Jesus' name. Trying to force that sexual scene in your mind. Trying to put that uh, division in your mind against a Christian or, or jealousy in your mind and thinking wrong about people. All oh, that's coming from the enemy. That's deceits. Deceits of the enemy. Constantly warred against. That's why you have to have your helmet of salvation on. Right. Those thoughts hit, hit that helmet fall off. And if it does penetrate, you've got to cast it down. But suppose you lived 30 years and you never cast those things down in your mind. What shape are you in today? Mm. And so many Christians struggle in that area. And I know, I've been there. Because I tell you, when I was uh, young and in school, I didn't pay attention to the preacher. I wasn't in church, but I didn't pay. <laughs> I didn't pay no too much attention to the teacher. It's one thing I want to do when I get to heaven: look those teachers up if they're there and say, "I am so sorry. I just looked out the window. Oh, I looked at the, the little the little. I wonder what that little black dot up there is." You know, and, and, and everything going over my mind, and like people sometimes I'm trying to teach and they go. Nothing penetrating. None of you guys, but I mean, I've had people like that, you know. Okay, I've got five more minutes. We've got to move. Hurry up, Bob. Okay. Now, look at verse 12. Verse 12. Here we go. See, you've got to identify the problem. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. You know, wrestling uh, is, is um, close contact. Would you stand up here, son? Now, I don't want to hurt you, but 
I mean, wrestling, you know, I'm like, oh, wrestle, come on, let's run. Right, right. That's close. <laughs> That's close contact. I, I want to, I want my favorite movies on. I want to sit down and rest. I don't want to wrestle tonight. I'm tired. Sometimes you got to say, Lord, give me, God, you are my strength, oh Lord. I know I need to wrestle before I go to bed tonight. I need to d- just hit that thing right square in the, right in the, give him another one, just, you know. In name, Jesus, name. It's serious business. How many kids are in jail today? Because their parents never taught them how to fight against the enemy. Never. Never. On drugs, in jail. You covered in the blood, you covered in the blood, son. Just do whatever you want to do. You... <sighs> this one woman said, I don't understand. I taught my son all about Jesus. Mm-hmm. And the preacher said, Dave, have you ever taught him about the devil? How the devil is deceitful and deceived Eve. And Paul said to the Corinthians, I am fearful of you, Corinthians, because you could be deceived just like Eve was deceived. I'm telling you, we come to church, it's life and death. It's hell or heaven. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents. But against the department, help me out, what's that? That's a new one on me. The postism? <laughs> Is that a drug or what? Against the power, I'll go, I'll skip that. Against the powers and against the master, notice, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural spree. That's why God raised us up with him to fight those powers in the heavenly spree. And they're constantly watching Watching your children, your loved ones, you. And when they get a chance, if they can slip in, if you give them, if you give them a chance, if you yield to them, that which you yield to becomes your master. Time has run out. Get your sheet. A lot to share on this. Are we ready? Now put your spirit into this. And your heart into this and the authority that God has given to us. Are we ready? Here we go. My Father in heaven, I pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of a virgin, lived as a man, died for my sins, arose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and now sits at your right hand in a position of power and authority. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he will return to earth in like manner as he was seen ascending into heaven. I have confessed every known sin. I have asked and received your forgiveness. I will make restitutions whenever and wherever possible as the Holy Spirit directs. I am willing to forgive myself and am willing to forget every confessed sin. I have forgiven every person of everything that they have said or done to me. I am willing to forget everything. I have renounced every occult and psychic involvement and influence as sin, and I will never again knowingly look for guidance or information to any other supernatural power or influence except the Holy Spirit. And now in faith, I believe that Jesus is my Savior, Lord, Healer, Deliverer, and Friend, that you are my Heavenly Father, and that the Holy Spirit dwells in my body, that through the blood of Jesus I have been forgiven and cleansed of every and all sin, that through the blood of Jesus I have been redeemed out of the hands of Satan and from his power over me. I believe that I am your child and a citizen and an heir of your kingdom 
that my body belongs to Jesus and is now the temple of the Holy Spirit, that my spirit is filled and led by the Holy Spirit. And I now submit my body and soul to the Holy Spirit. By the mercies of God, I present my body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, is my reasonable service. I am not conformed to this world, but I am transformed by the renewing of my mind, that I may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Therefore, Satan, you are an intruder in this body. Every legal right has been removed, and you can no longer seduce, afflict, oppress, torment, or influence my soul or body. Satan, you are a liar and a destroyer, a thief and a destroyer. I will not tolerate your presence any longer. My Lord Jesus Christ is my deliverer. He has given me authority to expel every evil spirit from this body. The blood of Jesus makes it possible for me to expel you in the name of Jesus Christ. In faith, I claim this authority right now. You evil spirits, every one of you. Now really put your spirit into this. Every seducing spirit, every unclean spirit, every oppressing spirit, every tormenting spirit, every vexing spirit, every infirm spirit, every occult spirit. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to leave this body and to loose this soul. You must loose this mind. You must release this heart. You must leave this soul. You must loose this body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to go. The Holy Spirit is riding you from his temple and you must go now in the name of and by the blood of Jesus Christ, amen. Quite an exercise, isn't it? Is it that rough down at the gym? <laughs> okay, you learned a little something. Uh, Go for it this week and see just what happens.